morning. Today we have a, a race captain here with us. So good morning, Kyle. Morning. Hey, how are you? Yeah, good thanks. Yeah, good day. So. Yeah, yeah. So when did you start playing football? Oh, I've like been playing football since I was like five year old. Um, I think my mum took us to watch Dunny Knight, who was my team when I was younger. I used to go and watch him for a season ticket. I was going to every home game and always with my friends playing. Just any time I could kick a ball, really. I was up there playing. Would you say it's always been what you've wanted to do then? Um, no, probably no. Um, I got into football um, through my school. Um, there was this thing called Kick a Kick Off, where it was like you went and done your work. Um, it was actually at Dens Park. Um, you went and done your work, but they also, an hour, I think it was every Wednesday and Friday, an hour, you used to go and do a bit of football training, and then Liverpool had one and Hamilton had one. So every year, year we would play Liverpool and Hamilton, and they'd done these skills at the games, and they said that I liked what they seen, and I got a trial, and ever since then, and it was quite a late starter, that was maybe 15 year old. So, as you say, a lot of people didn't really get in that late, and then once I got seen the training, and I just wanted to be a football person then, so it's probably a late start, but I'm glad it happened. Definitely a good opportunity though, to get to play against teams like Liverpool and that, like you said. Uh, who inspired you when you were younger then? Um, as I say, I've always been like a, a Dun United fan. Um, funnily enough, um, Craig Easton, he used to be a coach here. He was the under 20 coach, I think he was my favourite player. I used to like watching him play. And then when I kind of grew up, I was obviously a, I was a Liverpool fan myself, so I kind of always looked at Stephen Gerrard, Jamie Carragher, the other kind of guys that I liked watching. And as I say, I've got the opportunity myself now, and as I say, I'm getting a bit older myself now, so I need to try and inspire these younger players who actually want to go far in the game. Do you feel like you're doing that so far? Like, uh, you're becoming like that role model for like younger kids, especially like ones that come up from Wraiths Academy and stuff? Yeah, well, obviously speaking to obviously younger boys that are here and that, um, they've always got nice things to say about us. I'm always trying to help them any way, any way I can. Um, as I say, they're a good bunch of boys and a lot, as you say, obviously with Dylan. I was here when Dylan was a, a young boy and that, and as you say, I can see the leaps and bounds he's came on. He's going went from a boy to a man now, you can see the, dif the difference. Kieran Billy obviously went to Fulham. Um, it's about the younger players here as well. And as you say, I've got my own son, he's six year old and he's got to get into football now as well so I'm trying to also help him as much as he can as well so yeah. just try and be there for as many people as I can. Yeah definitely. You made your debut for Dundee in 2008, how much work is there buying a 16 year old boy making his way up to finally making your debut? Yeah as you say that was another thing as well, so at Dundee there was administration era um, so a lot of the players who are also the high, highest earners and that they obviously I had to obviously look elsewhere and then it was an opportunity for myself, people like myself and that, to actually get a game. I remember Jotty Scott just saying, I didn't even know until Saturday morning I was actually going to be playing my debut and as you say, I've never looked back since. And as you say, from going to a six-year-old to obviously what I am now, you learn so much in the game. I also think back then, obviously it was just a, it was a younger player and I know it's like being younger going out in that and it's just like, it's just like fantasy land but now it's like obviously I'm here, I'm also a lot more professional now and I want to do my best can for this club and also help any younger players and that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Uh, throughout your time at Dundee you had various long spells uh, at clubs like uh, Aloha, Athletic and Long Road. How did these spells help you develop as a player? Yeah, well, as I said, the manager, I went to Aloha and um, the manager was my manager Dundee, Barry Smith. He was a manager and as I said, I had one year left at Dundee and um, I got in touch with Barry and just said it would be an opportunity to come here and he said yeah. So it was like a year in the championship. As I said, Alba were a good team. As I said, they're still a good team now and I actually really enjoyed my time there. That was maybe a bit later on. The Montrose was when I was like, yeah, really, I was when I was like 16, 17. I got to go and play. I think it was meant to be there for three months, but I think I was there for maybe a month. And Dundee obviously had injuries at the club, so I came back. So it's good to, as any young player going out, you need to go and play like a man's game. Eh? Like going out here and just training with the boys and that. Also, it can help now, but you need to go out and you need to play games and see what it's like to play in like, these sort of leagues because it's it is tough and you need to be tough to be in this environment. It's, it's tough to be in the football changing rooms. It's, it's, it could be a hostile place if, if you're not ready for it. And as you say, it's, it's, it was good for me. And these different spells were good for me, and it's also what's brought us here. Uh, you joined Wraith in 2015. Is it hard adapting to new places? And what led you to like joining Wraith? Back then. Well, I think it was, um, as you said, 2015, I think, uh, 2015, and I had, I had the opportunity to go to Sweden and I had the opportunity to go to Holland, but my son was born, obviously, in the June as well, 
So I kind of I made the decision I didn't want to go. But as much as I would have probably liked it, I, I, would, I would like to maybe try and go somewhere um, back then, like go and see something diff diff different culture, different also people and that, and it would be nice to me to do that. But at the time, my son was born and I just got the opportunity here. Um, Ray McKinnon, I met Ray McKinnon um, in Dundee, and he said we could come and sing here. And I thought, nah, it's close. I was obviously staying in Dundee at the time, and it was it's close to here. Obviously, to drive here, it's close, and that was the decision I made. Um, it, I'm I'm usually a bubbly character myself, so going into tune rooms and that doesn't really doesn't really phase me. So I'm kind of in the jokers anyway. So it's, it's alright for me. <laughs> That's alright. <then. laughs> uh, you've left some of Ray's best moments and like lowest mo moments. What would you say is like your best memory at Ray's so far? Best memory, obviously, when the league, obviously, the circumstances that happened wasn't what we wanted, obviously, with the, the COVID situation. Um, also, being captain, also, I got to be winning the league as a captain. It's not a lot of people get to do that. Obviously, we had the cup final, and we've been captain. I had a chance to go to the cup final against Inverness. Didn't get to do that. So, but as you said, there's, there's still special moments. Um, obviously, the derby wins, beating Dunfermline, there's been a few of them. So, it's been nice, obviously, to beat them in the derby. And, a lot of high moments. There's, there's been a lot of high moments. It's, it's a great club. It's a big club, and uh, as I say, I've never once said uh, I've enjoyed every moment I've been here. And as I say, I'm happy to continue as long as possible. Uh, talking about derbies and stuff. Your last one was a huge win. Unfortunately, you didn't have supporters behind you because of situation. How did it feel scoring goal after goal and not hearing that cheer on from your supporters? Yeah, it's, it's, it's disappointing. Obviously. I can just picture, also, I know it's like bragging rights where Rafe and Dunfermline, like, I hear people going to work and that and there's a game on a Saturday they're itching to win just to go on a Monday morning and say to their colleagues that their team won and from, from them not to be that, that game also was disappointing. Um, I think you obviously hear us, we were celebrating on the pitch and that also, so I'm, I'm sure they will hear it on TV. Um, but as I say, okay, things are coming, getting back to normal now. Um, and as you say, Derby, obviously the last Derby that was suspended after 12 minutes. So. That was a bit of disappointment as well, but as I say, the games are back and I'm sure the fans all will we'll be doing our best to win the games when they come round next. Definitely. Uh, the last Challenge Cup, you were, uh, you beat, I think it was Inverness, no, you were going to play Inverness in the final. You were uh, nine sets joint winners because the competition couldn't go on. How far do you feel that uh, looking at the club this season can make it in the Challenge Cup again this year? Yeah, as you say, it'll, it'll be difficult, but obviously it's a, it's a tournament we we'll, we'll want to go and win. Um, as you say, it's, we'll put, it's not got the SPL teams in it, it's obviously but we're league, so we'll probably just give it a good go as MDLs. We've got a good start on Saturday there, and um, I think the draws, I think assuming somebody said the draws being made to the final, so I think, if we beat, I think we've got East Fife next, and if we beat them, we've got, we could have Inverness again, so it'll be a challenge of the joint winners in that game, if we both go through. Um, as you say, we'll take one game at a time, also the East Fife game and our derby. Next, but as you say, well, there's a good group of boys here. As you say, um, we've, obviously we've not played a lot of league games, eh, so we can't really look into it too bad. But I think we've had a good start, um, and obviously in the cups and that we've, they've done well. So as you say, it's the second team's head. On Saturday, you got a one 0 win against Forth in the cup. Uh, how did it feel to get to play again after two weeks without games? Yes, yeah, it's, it's difficult. Yeah, obviously. This COVID situation, you know, you don't know what's going to happen. Any game can probably get called off any time, depending on the positive and negatives that come back. So, as you say, it's good to get back. Obviously, the game's tomorrow now for the air game, so we'll be looking forward to it. And um, it's a game we need to go and try and win and try and get up the table. And as you say, it was good to, on Saturday to be back in front of the fans and that. As you say, we've got to win a clean sheet. Probably should have scored a lot more goals. Um, but as I say, it's, it was good to be back and then leave. Business starts again tomorrow, so. Yeah. Going into that uh, next game and then obviously Saturday's game, do you feel at all disadvantaged uh, due to the like lack of playing time you've had in the past couple of weeks? Or? No, it shouldn't make a difference. We had a bounce game against St Johnston last Monday. Obviously, we've been training hard. They are in the same predicament. They've been obviously no trained or what, or they've not played any games either. So both teams will be going to the game wanting three points. Um, as you say, I always say it's not, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon, it's a long season ahead, it's, it's only two games in. Um, can't be looking and saying, oh, we need this, we need that. We're just going to play our football and see what happens. As you say, we're looking to go and win every single game we're playing. Uh, in the game we're playing, we'll look to get the three points, um, and tomorrow will be no, no different.
Uh, you have the Scottish Cup game against Celtic uh, coming up in two weeks? Yep, or September, three weeks? Aye, yeah, September, end of September. Uh, how hyped up uh, are you and the team towards this game? Because obviously you had a really good game here at, against Aberdeen and then you're away against Celtic. Yeah, I think the boys, I'll admit the boys are probably... Celtic away is probably not the tie they wanted as into play because we've got probably a chance to get the semi-final but as, as games go it doesn't get much bigger than Celtic away and as you say I'm lucky enough I've played there a couple of times I've played at Rangers a couple of times but boys here I've no experienced that and obviously the kills coming back and that it'll, it'll probably be the best game they've probably played a lot of them that they've ever played in. Um, it's exciting um, as I say but we've got a lot of games this month there's Ayr Queen and Silve Morton away before all that happens. Um, so as you say, there's a lot of games coming up, and we need to focus on them first before it comes to Celtic game. But as you say, touching back on that game, it'll be a great feeling for everybody involved, and as you say, it'll make the club a, a lot of money. Yeah. You know, be on TV, there'll be a lot of fans. So as you say, it's good for the club, and we'll give it a bit of shot. I don't, we'll not change our ways. I don't think we'll be going there and being a different total. Are. We'll go out and we'll try and play, and we'll try and do, give it an attacking as much as we can. Do you feel like it's going to be like a really tight? month with like all the games that you've got coming up obviously like uh, fixtures like the one tomorrow that you, like we're meant to be on a different day do you feel like it's going to be a tight uh, month yeah as you say i think we looked at from the game on saturday i think it's like eight games in like 29 days or something it's not really what you want this early in the season um but you can flip it the other way and this time of season should be where you have the most energy as you say there's not been that many games so we should we should be fine um but as you say we've got a good squad here the squad needs change, there's boys that can come in and just do a job and it's, it's about get as many points as we can on board. Um, so yeah, you need to play everybody every yeah. time, so whatever happens, happens and just need to be ready for it. Yeah, and I think everybody would definitely prefer to have like tight fixtures now, mm. like you said, because you've got more energy than at the end of the season where everybody's starting to tire mm. out and everything. Uh, what message do you have for Rovers fans ahead of this season and obviously the month you have ahead? Yeah, as we say, we're, we're, Really appreciate the support they've gave us. It's great to have them back. Um, just want them to keep coming out and supporting the boys. And as you say, hopefully together we can make this a successful season. Uh, what advice would you have for all those young kids uh, who like look up to you, look up to like uh, any professional football player that wants to take football as a career for? Yeah, I, I, I always say just never, get, never give up. Never believe in yourself. It's one of the most things a lot of people have ups and downs even myself have ups and downs in my career but it's just about never giving up and just believing in what you're doing and it will, it will happen if you, I, I believe if you believe in something so much it will happen um, and as I say that's what I'm trying to say to my son as I say you just need to keep believing in yourself keep trying to prove that you're better and you're the best and as you say that's probably the biggest bit of advice you can give yeah definitely and uh, like it doesn't have to start from like a really young age like you said it yourself you had a late start but you've gotten somewhere you've mm -hmm. done something with it yeah, so uh, like you said it's as long as you put the work in behind it uh, is there anything you regret at all from your career like since you started till now or i always, I always say I'd never have regrets eh? um I, had, I was probably like Kieran Bowie at like a, a point when I was younger, um, about 16, 17, I had a chance to go. I wouldn't say the chance, but there was, I had an offer from a team in England um, at the time. But I was playing week and week with Dundee and I just said, I, I, I wasn't something I, I, I could have said yes, I'm going to go. I, I didn't get accepted from the club and I wouldn't say it's a regret, but I think like what Ziggy's doing now, like Kieran Bowie's doing now, I think it would be a lot better for me if we got to me early enough. Um, but as I say, I, I don't love your regrets. Um, I enjoy everything I've done in the game. Um, I've had a lot of achievements um, for being in, obviously in, this, in the Scottish game. And as I say, I'm only 29. Um, as I say, I'm still, what to say, in your prime. 29, 30, 31 is going to be your prime yeah. in the second half. So as I say, I'm looking forward to it. And as I say, I want to try and, I've been here, I think this is my seventh season now. And I want to also try and take this club as far as I can. Yeah, you've definitely got a lot still ahead of you. Uh, just to finish off, then, what is, would you say is the best thing football has given you in general, not just like your time at Ray, throughout your whole life? I just think in life in general, no, it's, it's, as you say, it's something you want to love, you love to do. You know, a lot of people get to go to their job and do something they love. Um, I've done that ever since I was 16 year old. Um, and as I say, it's no, it's no the longest career. It's in, as I say, you don't know when things can happen. Um, but I think just 
enjoying every moment and that meeting new people every year there's new boys coming in the dressing rooms where you're at and as you say it's as you say, I probably see the boys in here and what see my own family. As you say it's like as you say we're, we're, we're a family, I think the club in general is just a, a very tight club, especially here and I can imagine what it's like at other clubs. So just that feeling of coming every day and as you say you never come in thinking otherwise you always come in, you enjoy it, you go out and something you'll have to do. As you say I'm very grateful I've got to do that for so many number of years and as you say a few years ahead and I've still left. Do you feel like like all this gets you like a break? Like so whenever in your like personal life if you're having any issues coming to the football training with the boys playing games and stuff, it gives you a break from all the thought. Yeah, as I say I, I, I think it can work both ways, eh? Sometimes like like if if your things are right at no home, uh, coming in and speaking to the boys, just training, including your head, um, it's it's good for you. But on the flip side, you can go and have a bad game on Saturday, but then going home and seeing your family, it puts it in perspective. So it's kind of it's one of the jobs where you can do both. And if you've got a right mind and the right mindset, it, it should like just work its way through it as a progress, and you should just be able to enjoy it for the rest of your life. And as I say, that's what I'm trying to do now. And they said when we man comes to the games, now he's got to the age where he's sitting here on a Saturday watching watching the boys and he loves it, eh? so I can just imagine what everybody else is uh, feeling. And as I say, it's great, uh, us players, we can actually go out there and show for thousands of people that actually want to come and watch the Rovers and it's great we get to do that. Yeah, like, seeing the atmosphere uh, like on TV, every, like the Little Firmin game, although it couldn't go on, like, you seeing the atmosphere, getting, the team, getting like, all the fans behind the team, is, especially after like the long time it's been with it in here, so yeah. Yeah, as I say, it's, it's great eh, seeing them all, I think. Even going out uh, before the warm up and that, how many fans were here supporting me and that, and it's been like that since I've been here. Eh? Yeah. Obviously, with the COVID thing, it was obviously a different scenario, but I can imagine they've been watching the games and that they've put a lot of money, in, their own money into the club and that, which we also appreciate as well. As you say, it's it's a really family club, and as you say, like, behind me right now, there's little kids playing right now as well, so it's kind of like it just shows you it's from all ages and that they're trying to do the best they can. As you say, it's it's great to be part of. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I just want to say thank you very much for uh, agreeing to do this interview with me and I wish you all the best for the season ahead and the rest of your career. Yep, thank you very much for coming down. Thank, thank you. you.